Gaddafi suddenly anxious after months of silence to publicly confront the allegations of Libyan involvement in the Lockerbie bombing. First, though, in an interview that had some unconventional overtones, Gaddafi told ITN he would no longer provide arms and support for the IRA. As a matter of fact, we do not, uh, we disagree with the actions of the IRA. As a matter of fact, they are committing uh, acts, uh, acts of terrorism which we reject. We do, we do not want into, uh, into war between uh, the Protestants and the Catholics. And consequently, this, has, this is our decision, which is based on our own conviction. The IRA has said they got it wrong, but the police say the bomb on the school bus was timed to go off when it did, with 13 children on board. Tonight, one of them, 14-year-old Julian Latimer, is on a life support system in a Belfast hospital. When she was brought to the Royal, she was very seriously ill, critically ill. And she'd had surgery in Enniskillen that had saved her life, and she was brought up to the intensive care here in the Royal for further management. Julian is still very seriously ill, but in a stable condition. For some of her friends on the bus, Catholic and Protestant, there was little consolation to be found in the IRA's statement of regret over the attack. The IUC are still appealing for witnesses to come forward, but as with most incidents in Northern Ireland, information is hard to come by. Colin Baker, News at 10, Belfast. After a booby trap bomb every morning, but today he and his wife Anne were late and they forgot. As they drove their children to their grandparents a few streets away, the car exploded. Mr Anthony was killed, his wife injured, and their three-year-old daughter, Emma, blown out of the car, her leg broken and her face scarred. Their son, Gareth, aged nine, pulled himself from the wreckage and ran screaming for help. Mr. Anthony was a cleaner at the local police station. His parents said they bore no hatred for the murderers. What would you say to them if you could say anything? Well, I would say, I hope you're pleased. And stop it for good. stop. Because it's only given, I mean, you hear it on the television, and I keep saying that it's some, some mothers are sore heart, and I know now they have. Many of the residents here came out to try and help this morning, all affected by the sudden violence, some now suffering from severe shock. Tom Bradby, ITN, in Lurgan. Still sealed off tonight as stunned villagers came to terms with this double tragedy. In a field opposite, the twisted remains of the car in which 67-year-old Barney Lavery and his granddaughter Emma died. The hijacked van, packed with 400 pounds of explosives, had been left alongside the unmanned police station. The RUC say there were telephone warnings, but the terrorists had clearly set out to kill. Certainly the time limits that they set for us, there's no way we could achieve them in a rural area on a frosty, foggy night. Uh, and they would know this. There's no reason why they couldn't have left a longer timing on a bomb. At Emma Donnelly's school, prayers for the teenager who'd been everyone's favourite. She was full of life and full of fun and she was a hard worker and she was just very popular with staff and pupils alike. She was a great kid. There's been little violence here for over ten years. Ben Burb has prided itself on bridging the divide between Protestant and Catholic communities. Tonight, this community is coming to terms with a bitterness they hope to forget. Whatever their grievances, that is not the way to try and voice those grievances. Violence does not get anybody anywhere except dead. Barney Lavery was one of those who met here at the Priory to talk of peace. From a Catholic family himself, Mr Lavery died minutes after giving a Protestant friend a lift home. Only one last night here in this small village heard about him. They were all crying. Everyone in the village was crying. Barney, um... Emma was very, very close, as it was with all the children, all his grandchildren. Um, it's just, it's just a loss to them all here today. Barney Lavery had a rather larger family than most. At the school where he worked as a crossing keeper, many children called him Grandad. Today there was a new face at the roadside, as the villagers of Ben Burb vowed to continue their fight for peace. Robert Hall, News at 10, at Ben Burb, County Tyrone. Skillen woke this morning from the nightmare of yesterday's killing, still unable to come to terms with the scale of the tragedy. 
The community centre was by tradition a place for civilians to gather for the ceremony of remembrance. It was considered a secure building and wasn't checked for explosives. A team of forensic experts have been sifting through the rubble this morning looking for any clues to the bombers. That task is now finished and they've started demolishing the actual building. Today a man who was trapped in the rubble with his dying daughter described the tragic memories of Remembrance Sunday. As we passed the war memorial and onto the bridge, it seemed to be very exposed and I said to her, Oddly enough, I sure hope the police checked that brick this morning. Park McCarr came back and spoke to six or eight people who men who are now dead. And I said to Mary, are you all right there? Can you see there? And she said yes. Bye. Then somebody squeezed my hand and Mary said, Dad, is that you? Couldn't believe it. I said, yes, are you all right? And she said yes. How are you, Dad? I said, I'm fine. Dad, let's get out of here, I said to her. My dear, we can't get out of here. We're going to have to take him from here. I'm pinned down and so are you. But somebody will come. Give it time. Breathe quietly. Somebody will come. Don't worry, Mary. Then she screamed. I said, are you all right? She said, yes. Are you sure? Yes. She screamed again. Asked her three or four times. She assured me she was all right. She screamed every time. The fifth time I asked her, she said, Daddy, I love you very much. Those were the last words she spoke. What is your reaction now to, to the bombers? Who did this? This may surprise you. I feel no anger. Nor does my wife. Possibly because up till now we're concerned with our personal loss. We are aware that there are eight or ten houses in Enniskill suffered the same loss. Except that our loss was the youngest. Our whole life in front of her. I prayed for the bombers last night. That God would forgive them. At Enniskillen's town hall this afternoon, angry unionist councillors stormed out of a meeting attended by Sinn Féin. We're fed, up, we're fed up condemning this. Let's see them. Let's see the guilty men. Come down those steps and answer your questions. The Sinn Féin councillors left the town hall without making any comment. Have you anything to say about that? Tonight, the work on demolishing the community centre is continuing, while the community itself tries to rebuild the bonds between its members so that they can overcome the tragedy together. David Chater, News at 10, in a skillet. This IRA beer keg bomb was planned to explode at 11 last Sunday in a village less than 20 miles from Inniskillen. Either it failed to detonate or the bomber lost his nerve. But six hours after the Inniskillen blast, the IRA let on it was there. And last night the security forces disarmed it. At 150 pounds it was five times the size of the Inniskillen device. It was hidden here in a hedge at the border hamlet of Tully Homan at the assembly point for the Remembrance Parade. Despite the IRA statement of regret about Inniskillen, the RUC said the second bomb was planted with premeditated deadly intent. More than 200 civilians, mostly youngsters, marched on Sunday morning, unaware of the danger. These youngsters from the Boys and Girls Brigades could have become terrorist victims. They were all on Sunday's march, and tonight they opened their meeting their prayers reflected the continued yeah, spirit of forgiveness Pray. here. Heavenly Father, we thank you that once again we can meet here for our boys' brigade. We pray that your Holy Spirit will challenge and strive with those who plan these atrocities, that they may see their error of their ways and may turn to you in forgiveness. Forgive them, O oh Father, for what they have done and help them to see that what they do is wrong. RA had intended to force a 23-year-old man to drive this tractor, towing the biggest ever bomb assembled in Ulster. But the three-and-a-half-ton device packed inside a silage trailer became stuck in the mud. The target was the Anak Martin Army checkpoint. The IRA had taken over a house nearby, holding a Protestant farmer's five sons and daughters, aged between six and 23. A young girl and the eldest son were forced into this van. Before taking them away, two of the children were beaten after one of them tried to escape. Father, who doesn't want to be identified, said luck may have saved his son's life. The took uh, the eldest wife and uh, the girl away, and they bombed them into the van. Didn't even give uh, the oldest father time to put his shoes on. 
Disposal squad spent all day defusing the device. They found a dummy which they believe was intended to be left on the trailer or in the cab after it had been driven to the checkpoint. Tonight, the homemade explosives were put on show. The police said it was a ruthless attempt to commit mass murder. Andrew Simmons, News at 10, Northern Ireland. The owners had in fact been kidnapped by the IRA. The IRA had set up a bomb in the flat, which was designed to go off when the security forces came along to investigate what had happened to the owners. The people from the area left at the rubble from the middle of the floor, and there was a body lying there. Was he um, obviously dead? He, he was obviously dead at that stage, but the time the ambulance service got here, and it was, um, people who had first aid just stated that he, he was dead. Instead of soldiers or police, the victims were a widow and widower. The IRA apologised, saying it went tragically wrong.